Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 11 build 23471. This build includes a number of notable changes and enhancements over the last build video we did which was quite a while ago at this point and also it was a higher build number yeah that's weird doesn't really matter though today this is a newer build it has more features in it so let's take a look at what's new starting here um and so yeah let's dive straight in a uh, lots to go over here some new in this build specifically most of it not a lot of this also hasn't been announced we've got some early access features here that we can talk about which we'll dive into but we'll start with the taskbar you may have already noticed it in the bottom right here um this sort of uh, notification indicator is now permanently present uh, in previous builds if there was no notification then this sort of icon just wouldn't be there until a notification came in but now even if you have no notifications you can see that it's displaying a zero and if i open it yep yeah, there are no notifications if a notification comes in that number will go up and it will change color uh, to your system accent color so that's a minor change it's kind of more like the windows 10 uh, taskbar where the sort of notification icon was always present that is now here as well and uh, yeah, it's an experiment. Don't know if that'll stick around, but that is a change in this build. Okay, moving right along, if we open up the file explorer and go to the gallery mode, this is new. This gallery feature has been in testing for a little bit now, but it's basically a brand new rich photo viewing experience being built right into the gallery. And uh, this is what it looks like. And what's new to this build specifically is there's a add phone photos button up here, which opens up the OneDrive mobile app or opens up a web page to the OneDrive mobile app where you can download it onto your phone, sync OneDrive with your photos, and then view them in here. If we click on this button here, for example, we can actually go in and customize, or oh, where is it, sorry, manage collection. We can actually customize where this gallery feature is picking up photos. So by default, of course, it's looking at your local pictures folder, but I've also added OneDrive pictures here as well. So any photo that syncs through my phone to OneDrive will show up here as well. And as I said, it's a rich photo viewing experience built directly into File Explorer. So I can click on these here and you can select multiple of them. Uh, I can double click to open a file and that will of course open in the, um, well, ideally it will open, maybe it won't. I guess not, <laughs> I guess that's not working as it's supposed to. What if I right click and open it? I can't even do that. How do I open this file? Uh, open. Guess I can't open the file, that's okay. On the right here we get um, a, a timeline here, so if you've been using OneDrive for many years, you'll be able to scroll all the way back to 2014, 2013, or even before that, just by clicking, which is kind of cool. Uh, and yeah, that's a early look at the gallery feature. Um, again, no idea why it's not letting me um, <laughs> open these files. Uh, that's, that's hilarious. All right, anyway, while we're in the File Explorer, let's actually talk about the top of the File Explorer, because that's also being updated. Now, this hasn't been officially put into the build yet, though we know it's coming. Microsoft is redesigning the File Explorer. This details pane here, for example, has been updated with a modern interface, looks much more Windows 11-esque now, which is uh, pretty cool. You can see some information about it, recent activity, as well as a quick option to share with other people if you'd like. You can also open the properties dialog, which is still blindingly white, hasn't been updated with dark mode yet. Maybe that will happen one day. I'd love to see it. But at the top here, we can see uh, the File Explorer interface is changing. It's sort of becoming a little bit more like a web browser, which is kind of like how it was in the old Windows XP days and Windows Vista days. So we have the tabs along the top, which have been there all, the whole time. But we also now have uh, this sort of redone layout where we have an address bar, back forward buttons, up button, and a refresh button, as well as a search box. And then below that is where we have all of our File Explorer commands. So previously, uh, this was all, uh, these buttons were basically above the address bar and search bar, uh, but now it's the opposite way. We now have the address bar at the very top and the commands below that. And this is part of a larger effort to rejuvenize the File Explorer um, UI with more Win Windows 11 elements. So we're expecting this page here to get a massive update as well, as well as this navigation bar on the left here at some point. Uh, but yeah, slowly but surely, Microsoft is updating this file explorer to look and feel more modern. You can see it supports Mika blur effects here, and it's looking kind of nice. We have these modern drop downs here as well. So if you you know go into a few files here, you can obviously switch between different directories using this modern drop down interface. And of course, this modern details pane on the right is here. Uh, by default, that is off. So this is what it normally looks like. But you can turn it on if you want to experience the new modern details pane, which is pretty sweet. So yes, that is an early look at some of the changes coming to the File Explorer. We'll be diving into this in more depth when the rest of the interface rolls out. But for now, yes, that is an early look at the um, 
the adjust bar and stuff. Microsoft is also making it easier to, uh, well, adding the ability to tear out tabs into their own window. Not working in this build, but they have documented that as a thing they are working on that you can um, hopefully get access to at some points in the near future. Okay, moving right along. Let's start taking a look at some of the stuff we've missed over the last few builds, starting with uh, the Windows Backup Tool. This is a new experience uh, Microsoft is building into Windows that uses the cloud to back up important um, folders, settings, credentials, and, as, and apps as well. Now, this isn't actually backing up your apps to the cloud. What it's really doing is saving a manifest in the cloud into your OneDrive uh, with a list of apps you have installed from the Microsoft Store. Then when you set up a new PC, it just pings that manifest and says, hey, Microsoft Store, re-download those documents, uh, re-download those apps for me, thanks. And that's how it's sort of giving you the impression that it's backing up your files. Still, it's a much better process than how things were before. And it will even remember things like um, where you pinned them. So if you pinned any Microsoft Store apps to the taskbar or the start menu, for example, it will actually put them back when you restore on a new PC. So actually, for example, let's, let's test this out. If we download uh, Spotify, we'll download a couple of apps from Microsoft Store and we'll, we'll initiate a backup and then we'll restore at the end of the video and we'll see how well it does. So let's install Spotify here. And then we'll also install, say, WhatsApp, because I know these are hosted in the store. Uh, and then let's also download Firefox, because to my knowledge, Firefox isn't, although it is in the store, you can find it in the store, it's not hosted in the store. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is hosted in the store. Okay. We'll install Firefox as well. Why not? And then lastly, we can also install what app isn't hosted in the store? Discord. Yes. Okay. So although you can find Discord in the store, it's technically not hosted in the store. It's hosted on Discord's own servers. And while the Microsoft Store is taking time, yeah, provided and updated by Discord. Okay, so if we install this, this is actually going to pull in Discord from its own servers, not using the Microsoft Store. I'll be curious to see if um, the backup tool is able to restore this app as well when uh, we restore later in the video. So let's get those downloaded. Okay, so Discord is installed. I've pinned them all to the taskbar. Now, let me close and reopen this just to make sure it's backing up the most recent uh, image, I guess. Uh, here we go. So here's our desktop. You can see here all the folders it's backing up, all of the apps it's going to back up. Quickly access any apps on any Windows device. Uh, so yeah, remember installed apps and pinned apps preferences. So yes, it will hopefully remember pinned apps as well. Backing up settings and backing up our credentials as well. I also believe this will eventually allow you to back up uh, passwords in Google Chrome for using in other Windows apps like Edge and whatever else needs a password. Anyway, let's hit back up and the backup begins. So we can see the, pro uh, the progress it's making. Uh, folders are successfully backed up. Apps are currently backing up as are our settings. Credentials already backed up as well, which is pretty nice to see. And there we are. So everything's now backed up. That did take a few minutes, but that's okay. It's, it's backing up as long as all of our data is safe. That's fine by me. It says you're all set. Oh, I don't want to click there. Your info will be protected in the cloud and available across devices. Your PC will continually back up in the background so you stay up to date. So this will automatically, I guess, happen every now and then, which is kind of cool. But if you are about to move to a new PC, you can jump in here, hit backup, and initiate a manual backup for restoring when you go through the out-of-box experience. Once again, We'll show you that at the end of the video. But for now, let's move on to some other changes. If we go to the taskbar and go down to taskbar settings, uh, there is a couple of new options in here. So firstly, actually, if we go to search here, the option to enable search on hover is back and is now on by default. So if I hover on this icon here, it'll just pull up the search pane and you can begin typing or whatever, which is kind of cool. And you can turn that off. So if you don't like the hover stuff, which I hate personally, Microsoft, please stop making things open on hover on the taskbar. It's outrageous. Anyway, there we are. That is one of the changes. And then we've also got down here, taskbar behaviors. Microsoft is finally bringing back the option to turn on ungrouping or turn off grouping. So if we turn that to this here, you can see that we now have um, titles in apps. And if we open up multiple uh, instances of the same app, instead of it opening under one icon, uh, you'll see them open side by side. So you can switch between the instances instantly through the taskbar, which is kind of nice. And if you come down here, you can also turn on labels for taskbar pins. Now this is going to expand everything we've got pinned and I'm going to run out of room, but... Well, <laughs> always. There we go. So now it's working and you can see even when apps aren't open with this option on, it will show the label, which is kind of cool. 
But let's turn that off for now. Uh, and let's actually do that just because it looks cool, I think, for the demo of this video. All right, up next is a new feature called Dev Drive. Now, this sort of half goes hand in hand with a feature called Dev Home, which uh, is in preview. But this allows you to create a drive or partition on your drive designed for app development or you know, development, software development in general, whether you're making a game or a program, it's designed to deliver optimized performance for developer scenarios. So if we create a dev drive here, we can create it as a virtual disk, or we can resize an existing volume. Uh, in this case, we'll create a virtual disk. We can call it dev drive. Uh, let's see here. We can give it, let's give it five gigabytes, which normally you'd probably make this much larger, especially if you're working on a massive project. But for this demo, five gigabytes is probably more than enough. Uh, fixed size or dynamically expanding, and you can also change the virtual hard disk type. By default, set to VHD, but you can also set to VHDX if you'd like. And for whatever reason, this is not giving... Oh, I've got a browse for location here. So let's put it, put it in my documents folder. Why not? There we go. And it's still not... Let me create it. Is it not big enough? 50. Okay, 5 gigabytes not big enough. What about 10? Nope, 20, 30, nope, 40... Minimum 50, 49. Okay, so it wants, oh boy, that's gonna really eat up a lot of storage on here. Okay, for this demo, we're gonna set it as dynamically expanding, only because I'm not actually gonna use this to develop anything. It's just for the demo. Anyway, we're creating the virtual disk as we speak, and we're now attaching the virtual disk. We can now choose the partition style. Uh, yeah, GPT is fine, and we can initialize, we can give it dev drive as a label, D drive, that's fine, size, format. There we are, we now have a developer drive ready for us and we can now install all of our dev tools and project files onto that drive and begin developing our software. So that's pretty cool. If you open up File Explorer here, you will see it is now showing up in uh, the uh, this PC area as its own individual drive. Again, this is a virtual disk currently housed in my uh, documents folder and it's being synced with OneDrive as we speak. Um, but yes, that is how that works and that is uh, pretty cool. Now, as I said, that sort of goes hand in hand with another feature Microsoft is working on called Dev Home. Now this is in preview and it's not actually in the build, you can download it from the Microsoft Store, but Dev Home is a tool designed to streamline developer workflows and setting up machines to develop software. One of developers' biggest complaints with Windows is that setting up a new dev box or dev machine is a nightmare. It can take a while. You have to go hunt down all your different developer tools and all your different GitHub repos and all this other stuff. And um, this tool is designed to sort of streamline that. So you can just boot up a Windows PC, give this a configuration file, and it should set up your PC with all the dev tools and stuff you need. So you can monitor projects in your dashboard, connect to GitHub, create a dev drive as we've just done. So if we scroll down here, you can see we have an option for install applications uh, and we can search for apps here. So we can add, for example, Visual Studio Code. We can add Notepad plus, Notepad? Notepad plus plus. Uh, we can also add things like 7-Zip, Power Toys, why not? Uh, a couple more here, let's see what's interesting. Nothing else is interesting. Okay, that's fine, <laughs> we'll just install those four. Hit on next. Um, you can see all the details of the apps here. We have to agree to terms and conditions, hit set up. And now the Dev Home app will go out and just install all of those programs for us. And once again, you can create a configuration file with all of this sort of pre-done. Give it, give this app the configuration file and it will just do it all automatically. So whenever you need to go set up a new PC, shouldn't take more than a few minutes to get things uh, going on a new dev machine. So that's pretty awesome. So we'll wait for this to do its thing. Actually, while that's working, we can actually go back to the dashboard here and you can see uh, there's also the option to add widgets. So this is kind of cool. We can see things like GPU usage, CPU, network memory, SSH keychain, uh, as well as GitHub uh, pull requests and all of that other fancy stuff. So if we actually add our CPU widget here, oh my God, are we gonna crash? No, okay, pin. Give that a second and the widget can, okay, there we go, it did show up in the end. And yeah, believe it or not, these can also be added to the widgets panel. Uh, so if we open the widgets panel here and go to add and go to CPU, you can see. That's annoying. <laughs> I did not mean to click on that. Uh, let's go back. Oh, our computer's really struggling. 
Oh, is this it? Yep, okay, the CPU widget is now being added to the widgets board as we speak. This is my fault for trying to do things while uh, apps are downloading. What is going on? Just just let me look at this. There we go. We can see our CPUs in here now. So yeah, this app uh, retroactively adds a bunch more widgets available in the widgets board if you'd like to see them there instead of within the dev home app. You can see well, there are all sorts of here. SSHK, uh, SSH keychain is here. Review requested from GitHub, network, memory, etc. Let's add this one as well. There we go. Okay, lastly, as I promised, we'll now show you the restore process using a backup that we created earlier. Uh, but to do that, I do have to reset this PC, which is going to be fun. So we'll do that now and uh, we'll get, we'll, I'll cut back when uh, the restore is complete. All right, so here back at the out of box experience. Uh, so if we go through the process as normal, you, set, you select your language, your keyboard, all that good stuff, uh, connects to a network like so. Uh, you'll also be required to log into a Microsoft account, of course, since it backs up to OneDrive. Um, but uh, once we get there, all right, so here we are. So if we sign into the same account we used to back up, it should take a second. So here we are. It says, welcome back, Zach. You have backups saved from your previous PC. We'll bring over your apps and files to this PC once you finish your setup. And you can see here that this is the latest backup from June 1st, which is actually yesterday. Um, <laughs> I don't know why it's not showing the most recent backup unless the date on it's just wrong. That could be the case. That's, let's back up from this one. Let's assume this is correct. So if we restore from this PC, you can see it is restoring all the bits and bobs as we backed up earlier. And hopefully with any luck, if this is the correct backup, we should also see um, those same pinned apps on the taskbar, Spotify, WhatsApp, Firefox, and Discord. So you'll continue the out of box experience through there, set up your pin, all that good stuff. And then you'll just have to wait for it to restore. You can see we're almost at the end of the setting up experience here. It says restoring your PC, adding the finishing touches, almost there. And then on the desktop, you should see, yep, three of those four pinned apps have been restored. The reason the fourth one hasn't being Discord is because Discord wasn't hosted in the Microsoft Store. In fact, it was uh, hosted on Discord's own servers. So even though you can find it in the store, um, you're not downloading it from the store per se, whereas the other apps we installed were coming from Microsoft Store servers. And so they get backed up and restored uh, when we use Windows Backup. So that's why three of the four appeared. Uh, and there we are. So that's a quick look. Actually, real quick, you can actually even see that these are still being downloaded. So that we're currently, they're not installed yet, but they have been pinned. Uh, and the Microsoft Store is downloading them in the background, which is pretty cool. So there we are. There's a quick look at build 23471. Thank you so much for watching, and we shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.